Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Legal, rep <laughs> legal representation for AEW and Ian Riccoboni have filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit of Kelly and Kelly and the Tate brothers and are asking that the arbitration clauses in their contracts be enforced. According to a story posted earlier on today by John Pollock of Post Wrestling, the Jackson Lewis Law Firm, which is representing AEW and Riccoboni, issued a 40-page response on behalf of their clients. I have not gone through this. I just checked on Twitter a little bit ago. Brandon Thurston is dutifully going through everything. So, uh, you know, just follow his Twitter and, and at WrestleNomics, and he'll let you know what's going on with any updates that he finds in there. But... The suit was filed in the state of Pennsylvania in August and alleges, among other things, breach of contract, tortious interference with a contract or business relationship, and defamation. The defendants are requesting that the plaintiff's claims be dismissed due to an improper venue and to enforce their AEW contracts, which call for arbitration. The alternative to arbitration, according to the defendants, would see the case tried in the United States District Court for the Middle District of Florida, Jacksonville Division. It also argues that only two members of the case, Kevin Kelly and Ian Riccoboni, are residents of Pennsylvania and that the case should be tried in Florida where AEW is based and where the contracts were executed. They also argue that the plaintiffs agreed to resolve all disputes in Duval County where the city of Jacksonville is located and that their contracts state that disputes would be resolved in arbitration privately. Tom, I know you've watched a lot of Judge Judy, a lot of people's court, maybe, maybe even some paternity court, uh, possibly. But what do you think of any of this with all of your legal knowledge? Well, I, I believe that the case should be moved back to Duval County, to Jacksonville, where the contracts were executed. Uh, Ian Riccoboni's home place should have no bearing on where this trial takes place. And, you know, as somebody who's worked with both Ian and Kevin, I like both of these guys. But they are on opposite ends of whatever world, whatever spectrum you can find. And they are seemingly willing to, I don't know, I guess battle each other in public court to uh, get all of this handled. I don't, like, I looked at some of the stuff from the lawsuit, and one of the things that they're trying to push forward is the idea that the wrestlers for AEW are independent contractors. And, like, out of all the companies in pro wrestling, AEW allows their talent to do outside dates, you know? So I think that when you're looking at it in the grand scheme of things, like those wrestlers there have the best of both worlds in a lot of ways where WWE talent does not have that uh, same, you know, they don't have that same luxury. So I don't know that that is going to, you know, I don't think that one's going to fly, honestly. Apparently, that was one thing that uh, Brandon Thurston noted was at all times material hereto plaintiffs and all punitive class members were properly classified as independent contractors. You know, it's such a and again, I don't I'm obviously not a lawyer and I have not been involved in too many legal cases in my life. So, you know, how they can mix mash so many things because there are obviously contract issues from both guys that are saying hey you know this should be this way there's defamation you know that both are saying you know seemingly sides uh, kevin kelly is what? saying you know obviously with what ian Riccoboni said the tate brothers are bringing up what tony khan said at the press conference after saying that they were you know released that hey they had missed a bunch of dates so there's beef there but then you have that aspect of and these people are not independent contractors. They should be classified as employees. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how those things exactly mesh. No. And, you know, it's a multi pronged attack, but I'm not sure that 
any of these attacks are connected. You know, I don't know what... He, I mean, I guess if you want to say AEW itself is out there defaming the character of people like Kevin Kelly and the Tate Twins, then you could go after them. But those are two completely separate issues, as is the one about the independent contractor status. So, Well, and they're going to have a hell of a time proving the defamation. I mean, that's one of the things that was brought up was, you know, as a public figure... You know, did was he truly defamed by this? And and Kevin, I believe, is saying that he was. There's an issue over a New Japan date that I believe oh. he feels as though was blocked uh, by AEW and him not being allowed to do that show. I mean, surely his character has taken a hit in this entire thing. You know, Kevin Kelly at one time was kind of one of the more beloved announcers that you'd come across because of his work that he was doing in New Japan at really kind of the height of New Japan's popularity, uh, you know, worldwide in the 2000s. So I think a lot of people looked favorably upon him. And now if you look at the public sentiment around Kevin Kelly, you know, it's kind of switched a little bit. And it certainly has to do with how this entire situation was handled. It sucks. You know, it's it's just a it's a tough situation because just like you, I like both guys a lot. I've known Kevin Kelly for a long time. I don't agree with a lot of Kevin, you know, some of, of his things. But, you know, I don't think it's anything that I would ball somebody up and throw them in the trash for either, to, to be honest with you. And same goes with, with Ian, you know, certainly in the world, you know, you're going to disagree with people. But both are, I believe, very good at their jobs. And I'm um, you know, it's upsetting for, you know, because of both of them in the situation that they're in. Um, we'll I will to... say, I will say, I don't think Ian should have been wearing that cowboy hat. But, hey, that's on think, me. I don't, I don't think he should have wore the cowboy hat either. <laughs> but, you know, and that's, the, <laughs> you know, now you're going to get us into this stuff. I don't want anything to do with any of this stuff. I hope it, it ends up working itself out as best as possible for everybody involved and i'm just happy i'm not involved directly in any of it here one thing i wouldn't mind being involved in tom and i don't know about you i don't know how you're you're looking as far as your passport goes in anything but every time there's an announcement for scott demore's new maple leaf wrestling group like i get a little bit more excited now granted there's a zillion indies out there there's a lot of great wrestling out there Knowing what I know about Scott Demore, this promotion is going to be one of those that kind of slides to the top of the list here pretty fast, and the people he keeps putting on these shows makes it feel like that's, you know, exactly their goal is to make sure that they're up there alongside the GCWs and the, you know, those American companies that are at the top of the food chain when it comes to indies. But the company announced today that they have their first opening match of their two-night weekend. Josh Alexander, Stu Grayson, and El Fantasmo take on Rocky Romero, Alex Zane, and Trevor Lee. That's going to be the opening match for the Forged in Excellence weekend. The promotion is launching with two events from St. Clair College in Windsor, Ontario, Canada on Saturday, October 19th and Sunday the 20th. Both share shows will air live on as pay-per-views on Triller TV. The promotion is a basically a revival of the Maple Leaf wrestling brand that existed from the 1930s into the 1980s, run by Frank Tunney for years and then Jack Tunney, who, of course, became the figurehead president in the WWF after that. Demore left TNA earlier this year after being asked to because he was fired. So he didn't didn't really have much of a choice in sticking around. But Mauro Ranello and Don Callis will be the commentary team for both shows. And we've already got Kanosuke Takeshita against Josh Alexander on night two, as well as Kanosuke Takeshita against Speedball Mike Bailey on night one. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.